Yeah, welcome to the European SharePoint Office 365 and Azure Conference 2018 in Copenhagen. And we have a wonderful guest here. Please introduce yourself. So, hi, my name is Paula Anuskevich. Uh, I'm a cybersecurity expert and also CEO of uh, Secure, a company that provides cybersecurity consulting. And you had a keynote today. What were your three main topics today? I did indeed uh, have a keynote and it was uh, actually pretty awesome. The audience was great. So this is always what uh, stays in my head, how uh, different different audiences react to cybersecurity content. And it looked like everybody was very excited and uh, I really loved that they were very responsive. And uh, the subject was uh, very straightforward. It was about attacks of the industry. So anything that is important to have a look at um, in our infrastructures to maintain that basically every single time I'm going to the customer side and I see uh, the environment, I see the, the infrastructure and I connect, I see the same mistakes. And uh, that's pretty much experience of our whole team. What is out there, always working, let's talk about it, let's make sure that that never happens again. <laughs> I've been in your session and uh, it was very entertaining and all the other, I, I was a little bit scared because when you show all your demos, um, someone like me is not a deeply uh, expert in cybersecurity, has no idea what can happening. What are some best practice? How can we protect ourselves from, from cybersecurity risk? Well, you know, it's, it's like a long answer right now because it really depends of what kind of um, data area in the infrastructure we are talking about. But in general, there are a couple of trends uh, infrastructure-wise that we should uh, take into consideration. Uh, one of the first things to do is to make sure that you're going to implement the code execution prevention solution. So something that will prevent running a code that you don't know. And that is very cool because, for example, Windows provides that capability uh, that you've got, uh, well, a blocker, one of the things, device guard, another part. But then, um, platform security, you've got something that is called exploit guard mm -hmm. and control folder access and things like this. So these are the technologies that even regular users have access to. They can configure those and make sure that they're lowering the risk. Mm -hmm. um, Microsoft uh, Office 365 is providing a lot of security features. Um, how important is it to implement all these ones? Well, um, it, it, well, all of the security features in my to, to, to me are relatively important because uh, they, they have been designed with a reason, right? Yeah. So there has been a threat, there has been a problem, and that problem wasn't addressed before. That's why we've got a security feature. So within the Office 365, you've got different types of uh, advanced threat protection, for example, as a feature in general within, um, within Office 365. You've got a different types of uh, settings that you can enable to make sure that uh, users are not uh, or if they are clicking on links, for example, then these links are going through reputation services, and then they are uh, they're not bringing threat to the inside of the company. That's what I said also on the keynote that links are designed to be clicked. Yeah. And when I say it, what I have in my mind is actually Office 365 ATP. So uh, let them click. But we are relying on the machine learning. We are relying on someone doing a good job in security evaluating the link. So fingers crossed that all of the links will be, mm -hmm. of course. Um, marked as yeah. uh, dangerous if they are dangerous secure as secure of course but uh, this is really the time we're getting to that we stop relying on manually configured settings in our infrastructure we just say i want to be secure click which mm -hmm. in security trust is something that is very strange feeling because you want to verify you want to see uh, etc but uh, it just got too advanced so we have to rely on machine learning and good algorithms to protect us so it's an interesting time again we're getting into so the technical part is getting better and better. And on the other hand, you had a, such a, w a wonderful um, story about how you stole a carpet and that the risks are not only technical. Could you please uh, set us again on this story? Well, yeah, so this, the story was about uh, getting into the customer side and taking something out of the furniture warehouse. So effectively, this was a carpet, which uh, to me, it's a little funny because, uh, well, my posture isn't very like I'm not a you know football player or something. So um, when you are supposed to steal something from the furniture warehouse, it's a bit of a challenge. But anyway, um, in general, the idea was to do a social engineering on the security guard. Yeah. So I had an iPad with my Excel opened on it to build the perception of someone who is kind of like smart looking and I know what I'm doing because I have an Excel that looks serious and so on. And uh, at the end, uh, I managed to go through the conversation with this guy so that he actually lets me in to the to the furniture yeah. warehouse. Yeah. So 
I was very confident and I said that I don't need a pass and he said okay no problem then you can get in but you know this is just one of the hundreds of stories that I got yes so when I'm thinking about it I'm like okay but there is this another story there's another story and and there was this customer and that story so all these stories at the end they have a one moral that social engineering it's mm -hmm. easy and it's gonna be still easy if we don't recognize the context yeah. of our workplace and if we don't start expecting that something bad can happen and this is really this little conversion that we will need to do still be nice and maybe even uh, trusting but at the same time verifying yeah. and that's not a very new quote <laughs> so yeah so so cyber security is not only a, a matter of uh, maybe an antivirus software but it's a kind of behavior and i think you had three points the awareness uh, behavior and, and context culture, uh, yeah. culture. Yeah. Uh, could you explain it again? Yeah, so, so absolutely. So, uh, so awareness is something that, in general, we know what can happen. We know the context. We know the, we know, uh, in general, what are the paths to bring in the cybersecurity threats to the inside. Behavior is because we know all these things, we act. Yeah. So I compared that actually w on the keynote with the passing the driver's license. Yeah. So. Mm -hmm. You can be sitting there in the exam room and fill up the test or do whatever, but it's just a theoretical test. If you don't see things happening on the street, you will not really know that speeding, it might be really, really dangerous. And the probability of getting into an accident, it's higher mm -hmm. than you think. Yeah. So in general, th these are the conclusions out there. And at the end, we opt for a good culture. So if in general, everybody follows the same rules and we all bring that in minds and hearts that this is important, uh, then we're gonna act uh, accordingly. It's like in the nations, yes, in different countries, they we like different cultures. So we differ because there's a certain principle that that nation thinks it's good not to speed. Well, you can have, of course, lots of different security cameras and so on, but in general, we think like, well, you can be two minutes later, nothing's gonna happen, but at least you're gonna live. So it's pretty much the same mm. kind of story in cybersecurity. So do you think with all these things happening in IoT and artificial intelligence over the next year will rise the level of threat? You know what, uh, IoT is a very interesting subject that rise because it started to be uh, popular, yeah. but it, it has always been a problem, always. And I remember when I was starting my adventures with cybersecurity, there were devices that were actually exposing this company at risk. And uh, this, this was something that you should pay attention to always. Because the time didn't change, it's just our perception of it changed. And of course, challenges might be a little bit more difficult because when the things are getting hacked, which in my opinion is actually good, then we are figuring out using our brains how to secure them, then we are getting better. Like, you know, years ago there was an attack that was called Teardrop. Yeah. And this was like one of the funniest attacks that now when we look at this we are like, what? That's just like impossible that, w that was actually an attack. Everybody would figure it out, but not at the time. Yes. Mm -hmm. So when you change the sequential numbers of the packets, then you got a blue screen. Yeah, really? So that's to figure it out. It takes a minute. Yeah. yeah. But now you have to work hard. But on the other hand, um, for example, you've got phishing uh, that is absolutely advanced. That's why ATP uh, mm -hmm. work makes sense because you can have whatever Facebook lookalike um, link but at the end, the encoding of the letters is different, but it looks like Facebook. So even though you could be the best cybersecurity specialist, just by looking at it, you're not able to recognize the threat. That's why machine learning yeah. comes to place. Yeah? So that's why I'm saying links are designed to be clicked because like, how can we rely on users to be able to spot that something is dangerous? Then you, they will need to know like, how the attacks work. Mm -hmm. Oh, please, this just is not their job. Yeah. A and you have to develop a kind of mindset to to be aware of possible risks. Absolutely, yeah. and that's this culture part, yeah. yes? So uh, people need to know what are the risks, to understand them, they don't need to know the technology, but they can understand that by knowing their context, know, knowing their workplace, also being absolutely and undou undoubtedly supported by technology, mm -hmm. they're able to do a better job in cybersecurity. Great, how do you like the conference? A lot, oh. actually, a lot, yeah, yeah, yeah. So everything has been so professional, and um, it's just good to see that, for example, from the speaker's perspective, when you get off the stage, everything was just like so perfectly organized. Everybody was so nice in general. That's the first and most important thing. But then like, I just like plugged in my stuff. Everything worked. Guys, the audio guys, make they, they made sure that everything works. They just like 
like I didn't really have to do anything. It was just like today, just like did everything, and it was like awesome and completely stressless from the speaker perspective. But audience-wise, smiling people in the in the in the room. So this was good to see that. And yeah, so far I've been here for quite a short time, but the expo is great, and I also was making comments about that. Registration was very welcoming. So what can I say? I'm waiting for the lunch time right now. Good here. Thank you very much. It was a pleasure to talk to you. I appreciate it. Yeah, same to you. Thank you. Thanks so much. Thank you.